What's up, guys? Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, Seattle Seahawks draft picks. Going to take a little break from the football review, kind of recap what the Seahawks did during the draft. Um, so they didn't have a... Uh... Do you hear something? Sounds like a, like a horn from a boat. Well, let's check this out. Who saw this coming? I for sure did not. Hello again, everybody. We are going to have a break from the football coverage and focus a little bit on the Stanley Cup playoffs. Um, I'll be posting the football review show as we cover the Islanders in the Stanley Cup final, uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. Hopefully, the Stanley Cup finals. Um, I did not see this coming. I really did not. Um, I was excited for this year for the uh, for the Islanders because. The, uh, the team finally figured out where they're going to be in the future. They're moving to Brooklyn. Um, I don't see the issue with this at all. Um, I've had the Seattle Thunderbirds move to Kent, and it's still in the Seattle, it's Seattle area. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I will be fine traveling to Brooklyn. You know, I, I just wanted the Islanders to stay in the New York area. And I consider... As I consider Long Island and Brooklyn as part of the New York area, New York City area. Um, so I understand there's some angry Islander fans and angry Islander fans about that. Well, at least your team is not moving from New York to Quebec or Kansas City or even Seattle. Seattle at one point, uh, you know, could have been considered an option with us having arena talks. Anyway. Um, so when they got this, uh, when they fi finally figured out where they were going to play, I was excited. I just, we just needed this NHL lockout to be over. And I was happy because we finally could focus on the on ice product. Um, great thing about the Islanders making the playoffs is, uh, they're on TV here on the West coast. Don't get necessarily an opportunity every year to watch my Islanders. I do follow them. Now, for those of you who are saying, oh, wait a minute, how in the world does a Seattle fan happen to be a New York Islanders fan? All right, well, I have filmed one video about the Islanders. It was about the future and about them possibly leaving. It was a couple years ago. Um, I grew up a T-Bird fan, and the Islanders were actually a, the uh, first NHL team I ever saw. I have family on Long Island, and I became a fan of them uh, during the 2000-2001 season. It was the year before they had the unbelievable playoff run of uh, when they had Chris Osgood, Michael Pekka, Alex, Alexi Yashin, Sean Bates, uh, Jason Blake. It was the year before that uh, because the game I went to, Chris Osgood wasn't in net. It was actually Wade Flaherty. And they had uh, former Seattle Thunderbird, uh, Mark Parrish, uh, Mario Zerka uh, Zerkowski, Gary Galley, um, so the Southern play the Atlanta Thrashers, who unfortunately don't exist anymore now in the Winnipeg Jets. So I've been an Islanders fan from since, 2000, since the year 2000. Um, and I'm going to tell you, these last few years, these, this six-year drought has been incredibly frustrating because we had a good coach with Ted Nolan, and uh, we let him go. Uh, and we just kept, we kept with the young guns. Um, and the young guns have been incredibly streaky. Uh, John Tavares was... Uh, a great selection with the number one overall pick in the NHL draft a couple of years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, Josh ba Bailey's playing well. Veteran Matt Molson's playing well. Uh, and to get our goaltending situation uh, finally figured out, at least for the regular season, with uh, dumping Rick DiPietro, which was huge, and uh, uh, bringing in Evgeny uh, Nabokov from San Jose, great move 
from for the Islanders. So, I mean, I was excited. Just needed to get this NHL lockout out of the way. And then once it got out of the way, lo and behold, the Islanders went on a little bit of a, on a little bit of a streak at the end of a shortened season, clinched the playoffs. Um, so that's a little bit of background about the Islanders and me as a fan. Uh, I don't talk too much about the Islanders because I live in Seattle. The Islanders play in Uniondale at this point. Um, and they will be uh, going to Brooklyn. Um, I've been to two games. I've seen, as I said, I saw them play the Thrashers, my first game. And then it was uh, 2009, I saw them play the Toronto Maple Leafs. So, uh, so and I saw each, um, each game, the Islanders were victorious. I came that close to being a Ranger fan. That close. I was next in line to get tickets, and then the game was sold out. Next night, I got tickets to the Islanders again. Became a fan of them. All right, so uh, so that's a little bit about me and the Islanders season. So let's take a look at the playoffs. We got the eight seed, um, which is really unfortunate. Um, you know, I'm just happy to be in the playoffs first time since 2007. I mean, the last time the Islanders were in uh, in the playoffs, I mean, you can make jokes like. George W. Bush was president. Um, I was on the radio. <laughs> Not only was I on the radio, I was uh, part of a sports show that it had its that lasted for three years and it had its three original hosts. Um, I hadn't declared a major yet in college. I was in college, you know. I mean, it's been a while. It's been a while. But these, uh, the, the it's unfortunate that they got the eight seed, um, not just because of their opponent, but. They actually clinched the playoffs before the Ottawa Senators and the New York Rangers did. And to be that close to getting a legitimate seed, I mean, they almost had a shot for fifth, if I remember correctly. They almost could top the Maple Leafs if they got one or two more points uh, late late down the stretch. But um, it's unfortunate that they, that they dropped eighth, but a playoff appearance is a playoff appearance, it's particularly with the Islanders. Um, the only time that I think they really had a – had a you know a, a chance to get a great seed was that 2001 2002 team um but uh, for the most part every every time i followed the islanders it's been the eight seed but they're in i'm not going to complain it's just unfortunate that they clinched before those two teams the senators and rangers and then after those two teams clinched those two surpassed the islanders so it's disappointing in that regard so they are going to play the pittsburgh penguins Yeah, that's a tall order. Uh, incredibly tall order. Um, I would like to say hello to the one Pittsburgh fan I know. How's it going? I know it's been a while. And, uh, you know, good luck. That's all I'm going to say. Good luck. Uh, this is a tall order because the Islanders are a very young team. Um, they're a scrappy team. They do, however, have an MVP candidate in Tr John Tavares. And I hope he gets it over Sidney Crosby. Nothing against Sidney Crosby. I actually am a fan of Crosby. Um, and Ovechkin for that. For those of you who are like, no, Ovechkin's better. Crosby gets assists. Anyway, um, John Tavares has put together a full, healthy season. So the kid, unfortunately, has been hurt. And probably, if Sid the kid was hurt for the entire season, the Pittsburgh Penguins would likely go to the playoffs. They probably just wouldn't be as good as they are now. Whereas if you take off Tavares from the Islanders roster... Probably not going to be in the playoffs. I'm just saying. So I do hope John Tavares gets the MVP. Um, but the Pitt Pittsburgh, man, I mean, God, when they got Iginla, Jerome Iginla, early, uh, in the middle of the season, like, look out. I mean, you're talking about a team that has incredible scores with Crosby and Malkin, and then you're going to bring in another veteran who's who helped lead Calgary to a Stanley Cup final appearance back in 2004 when he was just getting started. Um, you talk about a good, solid veteran presence. Wow. The Islanders, um, their scoring depth, of course, as I said, John Tavares, Josh Bailey, Matt Molson. And I know I'm going to butcher his name. I know who I'm talking about. It starts with the O. It's like Kyle Ocoposo. <laughs> um, so I know he's he's had, had a, a good season for us as well. And my number one concern for this series is actually in between the pipes. That's right. Uh, if getting a ball off. Nabokov is a great, great, great regular season goaltender. But that guy can give up a pile of rebounds in the playoffs and be an absolute choke artist. Not in the sense of Roberto Alongo, whereas in you're going to play 59 minutes and then that last minute is up for grabs. No, we're talking about like electric games during the regular season, shutouts, great, 
you know, saves here and there. And then it comes playoff time, and he gives up these huge rebounds. I mean, just these huge rebounds. He, he can't. He, he has a very difficult time covering up the uh, up the puck. And I understand that that may be a little difficult just because he's a butterfly goaltender. I get that. Um, but that is my number one concern about this series. The reason why that's my number one concern is because there's a chance that Sid the Kid is, is, is going to miss a couple of games. And that's definitely going to be a benefit for the Islanders. I, for a fan, would rather play Sid the Kid as well and the Pittsburgh Penguins as a whole just to say, hey, we beat the Penguins at full strength, but I'll take the advantage. Uh, I read, I summed up the, uh, I read, I uh, summed through, I uh, slimmed through the uh, preview on ESPN between these two, yeah, uh, between these two teams, and they actually said that like Sid the Kid does not match. I mean, the Islanders do not match up with Sid the Kid. That's how good Crosby is. So, but I will say this, I will say this, and I know I said this with the Thunderbirds. Strange things have happened. Look at the LA Kings last year. No one gave them a shot. They got into the playoffs. Next thing you know, they're hoisting up the Stanley Cup Finals trophy. You look at previous, um, you look at other playoff runs from teams. I'll even include Pittsburgh. I think it was in the late 90s or early 2000s when they were the eighth seed. They took down the New Jersey Devils. That was when they had Yadimir Yager. Um, and the Islanders, even though they, I, have, I, as a fan, have yet to see them win a postseason series, if you look at the teams that they have played and how they've played, they actually haven't done, done done that badly. I mean, I understand that, you know, losing four games to one looks like a blowout. But, you know, when they lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2004, they took Tampa, I want to say, to one, maybe two games to overtime. You know, uh, they took, uh, they almost came back and first forced an overtime against the Buffalo Sabres the last time that the Islanders were in the playoffs in 2007. Um, it was the year after their 0-1-0-2 run where it was pretty much they're done, you know, when they lost to the Ottawa Senators a couple of times. So, but the one thing, the one thing that the Islanders have, there is absolutely no pressure on this team, period. Nobody expected them to be here. They're not like Pittsburgh where they're this juggernaut of a team and they're pretty much going for it right now. No, this is a team that's going to gain experience with this playoff series and they're going to they're going to experience what NHL, what Stanley Cup playoff hockey is like. There's no pressure on them, none. Which means take all the pressure off them. I mean, if they go out, they end up getting swept. What do you do? I mean, they've already exceeded expectations. Where I, the one thing I will say though is I hope they don't do what Seattle did this year: go out three games to none and then lose four. <laughs> so. Um, I'm really happy that the uh, ESPN is predicting the Penguins to win in six and not four. So at least uh, we're getting some love there. Also, we got some love. Uh, the Islanders got some love on around the horn. Uh, Tim Kalashaw predicted them to upset the Penguins. My prediction? Oh yeah, Islanders gonna win. No, uh, <laughs> but I will be watching the game on Wednesday. I hope to watch the game on Friday. Uh, we got games one and two in Pittsburgh, and then it's gonna be off to Nassau. I know long. Uh, I know that uh, Long Island is going to be excited for this, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm stoked, man. I'm ex I'm excited because the playoff drought is is done. Uh, you know, after just years of dismal hockey, you know that's those, those years are over. But not only, but the main thing is I get to watch the Islanders on TV, and that's that to me is the victory in itself because they don't they're not usually featured on TV. Alrighty, go Islanders, and uh, I'll recap. Uh, Game one, as soon as I get the chance, on Wednesday. Happen at 4 p.m. Pacific time. Talk to you all later.